Coach, uh, what can we expect from Colorado? Obviously, you guys play basically the MLS team. Now it's probably going to be a different team. And how not how not to fall into, okay, we're playing guys that are not MLS. So how would you handle that? Yeah, we've, we've addressed it all week long. The first time we played Colorado, we prepared for their two team. It wasn't until you know late that we had intel that in fact they were going to roll out their first team players. So that was an interesting, you know, and, and somewhat uh, difficult situation for all of us to handle because we prepared for a certain group. We got a completely different. But we we what we did to the players was we said, hey, can we meet this challenge? And so we kind of have to do the same thing just on the flip side of it this time. Say, you know, we're in a good place in the table right now. Now we know, we think we know, we have a young team coming here. Uh, it helps that they beat Portland last week and did it. Uh, they came from two goals down to, to win 4-2. So um, we'll, we've shown plenty of that kind of video. So that always helps. Um, but it is a, a challenge for us. Hey, Coach. We're standing out here on this turf. Talk a little bit about how it is to play on turf in the summer. It, it's another challenge. Um, you know, your feet alone get really hot. Uh, you start to get some blisters and some, uh, it, and it just, you can feel the heat coming off it. Uh, last week before we played during warmups, you know, I think the heat index on the turf was over 100 degrees. Jeez. And that that is just, you know, the environmental stuff that you have to deal with, but it takes away from uh, an athlete performing at their absolute optimum. So um, we just have to deal with it. The reason we're here today and tomorrow is for this exact purpose. We need to get used to the surface, but we also need to get used to how the heat radiant is off and how we feel that way. Coach, uh, Vitor Diaz was absent from the last three games. Uh, what can you share about his situation and any other injuries? Yeah, we, Vitor is coming back. Um, to be fair, I don't think we'll, we'll see him uh, on Saturday. We're hopeful that he continues to make progress in his recovery. Um, we've missed him a lot. He's not only an important player, but he's a wonderful person to be around. Uh, so we've all missed him, and hopefully he'll be back with us soon. Coach, you guys are tied for first in the Western Conference right now. Does that put any pressure on you? I, I mean, it's the good kind of pressure. You know, it's the kind of pressure any team wants. You want to be in a favorable position. Uh, it does... Uh, kind of trick the mind somewhat when you think about playing teams that aren't close to you and that was something we faced last week with RSL and RSL you know they showed that they're a good team and that uh, you know they were capable of winning that game on Saturday the same kind of uh, feeling is going to happen on Saturday when we play Colorado there I've coached a bunch of guys on that team you know in the youth national teams they're guys that had first team minutes so we we know we're going to get a quality team and again the fact that they won their last game and did it in kind of dramatic fashion needs to be a little bit of a red flag to us that we're going to get a quality opponent. John, the Welcome to the press you, conference. <laughs> I need to read press releases more closely. Right <laughs> That's all right. I told Cash there's 100% this is going to happen. Somebody's going to show up <laughs> over like there. I, I read it and I got as far as Lou Fuse. Okay, I know where I'm going. Yeah. And then, and then just... You and my wife. My wife came to pick me up last week and she came here. here. And I call her. I'm like, where the hell are you? And she's like, I'm at Lou Fuse. I'm like, you're at the long, long one. So. It'd be really great when you guys get your own your own place. You know, yeah. that'll, be good. that'll be nice. Yes, that'll be very nice. Yeah. It also much closer to my house yeah. anyway uh, development I mean this is a developmental league how are you seeing development work are you seeing that you know with younger guys helping I was talking to Josh the other day he was saying you know, you know when he was in England coming out this is what he needed was something yeah. like this because he was an 18 year old guy trialing with 25 year olds and didn't have a chance I mean, and that's it. Like you think about development, what do you need? Well, you need a good training environment and then you need a good game environment. You need teams that are going to test you and you need the chance, you know, to, to play. So, yeah, I think it's been fantastic for our group. Um, and because we've played and maybe it's because we're, you know, close to the top of the table that we've kind of gotten the best out of our opponents. Um, I haven't mentioned it today, but we seem to scout our opponents and they'll play one way. Mm -hmm and they come into St. Louis and they switch their system around, which is another challenge. So 
We have been able to get a lot of young guys their first professional minutes. Uh, when we play at home, part of the developmental process is that you're in front of a crowd, you know? You can hear it, you can feel it. It's, there is people, there's a camera on you. It's a, a spotlight, if you will. And that's an important part as you try to grow as a young player. So we feel really good about that from our end um, and the league has provided us that opportunity. How different, as you see other teams around there, are you di di how different is your team from other teams in the league because of the situation? Yeah, the only team that's like us in the league is Rochester. Um, they're the only other standalone team. So all these other teams, are it's their second team. Right now, we're our first team. We're, we're the, the top team in our club. And that does have a different uh, you know, situation to it. We get to train more collectively with the same group of players every day. We get to become a real team. Uh, some of the, the second teams in the MLS, they have guys that go back and forth on a daily basis. So that does uh, play a part. We're fortunate and, and we've used this as an opportunity to practice our, our process and what we want to do next year with our first team and then pass that down to City 2 and all the way down to the academy and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. I and mean, you've coached it. MLS and USL. How how is how has this level been of soccer? Uh, I would say it's it's on par with the USL right now, um, and it depends on what what players you know you're playing against. Like when we played the Rapids last time, that was a proper MLS game. Um, uh, you know, a lot of guys I'd coached on the U.S. Men's National Team were in that game. Uh, so that was you know it didn't have the same feel as an MLS game because we were playing at the University of Denver, but you know when when you're playing and you're playing against that caliber, that was great. You know, other times we've had a mix. You know, some really talented young players with some older, more experienced. So uh, that has been a different challenge within this league because you never know who's actually going to show up on the game day roster. Um, I think we've taken advantage of that because we've tried to be very consistent in our process of how we prepare for all of our t opponents. Mm -hmm. The way your team is playing is more consistently seeing what you want to see? Yeah, that's another component of it because we get to really focus on us. And mm -hmm. when you have this uncertainty about who you're going to play, you, you tend to focus, okay, what can we do? We can only control what we can. Let's focus on how we prepare and not worry about the other team. How much fun has this been for you? Uh, it's, it's the, I'm in the best job in the world because this is what I love to do, you know. Um, and so the group of players makes it even better. Um, I think we have a fantastic group of uh, players that we're working with. I think that's why you see us being a good team um, when we're faced with some challenges. And I would have to give credit to our staff because our staff is pretty amazing. And um, I think that was good planning, good selection, but also we're fortunate when all of those things come together. Are you seeing guys out there that are like, okay, this this is an MLS caliber player? Absolutely, yeah. I think I think between Lutz and Bradley, uh, there's going to be some really tough decisions to make uh, as we move forward. Um, as we've you know had a, a bit of a focus on bringing in our players, uh, foreign players, and uh, signing them to first team contracts, we're going to have as difficult a, a process to identify the guys that you know, we're going to take to the first team from this one. And soon you're going to have those guys, some first teamers from next year are going to start working with you guys. Yeah, right? we, we might be the most high powered MLS <laughs> next pro team on the planet, uh, for sure. Uh, you know, Roman Berkey is going to be the first to arrive and that's going to be special. And, and um, we've talked about it internally. We, ha we feel great about the environment that we've created for, for this group of players, also for the academy. Credit to the 16s being in the semifinals. You know, we're really proud of them and, and all that we've accomplished in year one, trying to build a club from scratch. But my point is you bring those kind of players in and now we just need to integrate them in all the right ways. We need to introduce them to what you know our standards are, what our culture is about, you know, the little nuances. Um, and we need to make sure that we're we're very, you know, keep our continuity from what we've built and try to grow that um, and continue to move that in a positive direction. Yeah. How far away is Berkey from from suiting up? Uh, it, it depends on whether you ask Lutz or not. Like, uh -huh. Lutz wants him to play on Saturday night, uh, uh -huh. but he needs some time. So uh, we, we are going to give 
every one of those guys coming in a proper you know preseason both from a, a physical standpoint in terms of their preparation um you know jared phillips our, our new uh performance coach is doing a phenomenal job and uh bradley and and jared have, have individual plans for all of those guys so while we'll see them in the near future it might not be saturday night uh, is, is berkey actually in town i think i'm not giving away secrets am i <laughs> He's arriving on Friday. Arriving on Friday. So, yeah. yeah, so Saturday might be a bit of a rush. Saturday <laughs> might be a rush. Hand him the kit as so, he gets off the plane. And yeah, <laughs> we'll see if, if Michael and Ian, uh, if, if there's something goes on with them, I might have to throw really Berkey the, uh, the gloves, but probably not. Does, does there still have to be a uh, visa process to go through? Or no, for, for all of the guys that are coming, that process of getting their visa and, and all of those things is happening before they're actually in town. So the good news is we just need to get it, them the proper physicals, you know, in order for, for them to be uh, deemed fit to play, put them through our whole medical staff with Dr. Brophy and, and his staff, um, and then they're ready. So, mm -hmm. and then it's about, you know, are they ready to play in games? Mm -hmm. You would think he should be reasonably ready. He hasn't been off that long. Or... No, you know, um, he had a huge send off at Dortmund, um, played quite well. Uh, and, and just getting to know him a little bit, uh, he's a really uh, fantastic person and, and has a, a you know, part of his, I think, decision making to come to St. Louis because he's so excited about what we have going on here and he wants to play, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I give him a lot of credit because he's the first one and that's by choice. And he's coming here with the intention to, to get out here, you know, at Lou Fuse and with these young guys mm -hmm. and teach them along the way, but also to prepare himself for the future. Yeah. What's been the influence of guys like Josh Yarrow? And then when you get guys like Berkey training with some of these U-17s, yeah. you know, 16. And Aaron Hurd, uh, you know, yeah. There's, uh, that's one of the things I'm, I'm most proud of is that you have our leadership within our current locker room mm -hmm. uh, that has really embraced that part of trying to bring young guys and, you know, teach them how to be good pros and teach them how to train and recover and rest, um, mm -hmm. take care of themselves, you know, from what they eat and drink, all these little details, but more so just about how they deal with them as people. Um, Josh has done a phenomenal job, and so have a lot of other guys that have experience. Uh, that's been special to be around, and I'm sure Berkey will contribute to that. Close call for the U16s. Yeah, I just heard, you know, we, we watched the, the first half as a team in, in the auditorium at LeFuse, and that was fun, um, and so many good moments. So. Really proud of them. You know, you get to the semifinals, especially again as a first-year club. That's amazing. Yeah. And so I think those guys won't be back for you for Saturday. Uh, you might see one of them. You'll see one of those guys. But we're all, we also they started almost a, a year ago. So they started last July 14th mm -hmm. was the first academy training session. Mm -hmm. So they've essentially been going for 11 and a half months now. We need to give those guys a break. Um, so we've put that into our plan. Uh, we have one player who had a, uh, was out with an injury for a long time, mm -hmm. and we'll bring him back because he had his own, own little break. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Coach, yeah. and after giving them that proper break, uh, are there any plans to integrate anyone else from the U16 or, for, or from the U17s? Yeah, there's, a, there's a, a, a handful of guys on both the 17s and 16s that we want to now um, because they're playing well. You know, that's the part of our developmental path is if you perform at a high level, especially if you're going to a national championship and you show well, like, yeah, we want to bring you and, and give you a taste of what it's like to be here. So um, with bringing some of our foreign acquisitions in uh, for the first team and bringing a bunch of, uh, you know, youth guys in, we might have two full field practices going on. It'll be test my uh, managerial skills, but I'm up for it. Are Michael and Ian excited about training with Berkey? Yeah, because I mean, can you imagine if you're those two uh, that you get to, to now be next to and training with a world-class, you know, uh, level player like that? And with his experiences from, you know, national teams to Champions League to the Bundesliga, I mean, this is an incredible opportunity. And we've tried to present it as such that like now you have even more competition to play, but what a, you know, could you be in a better position to learn from somebody? And, and because Roman is the way he is, we feel like it's gonna be wonderful for Ian and Michael. 
used two words that I found very interesting and she used actually a lot. Leadership and culture. How do you determine who the leaders are? Do the leaders emerge as they come in? The core you got now or just a certain type of individual? And then how do the how do they buy into that culture that you guys have are clearly intent on establishing? Yeah, there's no set recipe for any of those things. So I think it's a combination of art and science. Um, but from Lutz's, like Lutz laid out a clear plan and a vision for our club. And so now he brings in Bradley or he brings in myself and we know what that vision is. We know what the standards are and that helps. And so from our standpoint, we have to do the same thing with the players. We have to make it crystal clear what the expectations are. And then there's the accountability part. You know, there has to be accountability to when a guy makes a decision that's not in line with some of those values. And um, we've done a really good job, and, and thankfully because of the people we brought in, uh, of, of building that in a very short amount of time. But I give the players a lot of credit because I think as a coach, you can always ask and demand for a high level of whatever it is you're asking, whether it's the performance on the field or how they eat in the meal room or how they clean up an opposing locker room, all of these little details, but they go a long way into building a, a strong culture.